Good morning, Tacoma New Life Church. Uh, today is Monday, July 6th, and we are on day two of the latest Bible reading plan we started last week. You've heard it said. I hope you all had a great weekend uh, worshiping our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, and also uh, celebrating the precious freedom and independence we have here in the great land of the United States of America. You see, it's a freedom that has come at a great cost, a great price, and a great sacrifice. And it's a continued freedom that our country longs to protect. And if you are a voting American, continue to educate yourself and become familiar with all the propositions and bills that are trying to be passed. And would you vote to ensure continued equal liberties? justice and freedom for all people in this great land you see the fourth of july is more than just barbecue and, and fireworks right it serves as a reminder to the responsibilities we possess as citizens of this great great nation right wanting change and progress will be meaningless unless we do our part and head to the polls to vote so Keep that in mind, right, as we just celebrate uh, the independence that this great nation has, all right? Now, with that said, we are on day two uh, of this new Bible reading plan, and the theme for today is following Jesus isn't just a cause to be a part of, it's a calling to give your life to. I remember being at a faith-based event many, many years ago, it was probably like a worship concert of some sort and a representative from world vision was there and they show you this video it touches your heart right it just it just moves you and then a spokesperson comes out and says you too can be a part of this cause or right? you can be a partner in providing for these people and because right the the video and the, the presentation i mean it just touches you emotionally and just kind of pulls on your heartstrings right without any prayer or any prayerful thought and discernment you just kind of pull the trigger and help out and as time goes on you just forget about it you know whether that's because your account is set up on auto pay or you just pay no attention to it i mean whatever the case right we uh, become a part of causes without being fully invested right doesn't make sense why right? we just do a little bit here and there and because we're compelled at, at the moment we make a, a decision and maybe it might not be the greatest decision and we don't have any commitment and we're not invested into it and so whatever cause we are part of right our interest just kind of begins to dwindle and fade away right and i'm sad to say it but we kind of treat uh, uh the way we follow christ kind of like this right we kind of aren't that invested right we go on emotionally driven spurts we mindlessly do things we commit to stuff because we we feel bad or we're guilt tripped into it and sometimes we're just on autopilot doing these kind of stuff and we do it for moments we do it for seasons and we might even do it for terms like uh however long your responsibility is if your responsibility for a particular department or ministry is for two years and then you do those two years and then you're completely done right when your time is up but the issue is right the root cause is we are never fully invested we are never really sold on commitment Greg Rochelle says right he's the pastor uh, to the people who make the YouVersion Bible app, right, the very app that we utilize for these Bible reading plans, right, he says you can't be partially surrendered. I'm sorry, let me say that again. You can't be a partially surrendered follower of Christ. Because let's be honest, if you're a partially surrendered follower of Christ, are you really following Christ? But in other words, you just can't follow Christ. You just can't kind of follow Christ. You just can't follow Christ on the weekends or whenever you step foot on the church's 
property. Like you just can't follow Christ like that. You can't just say, I'm going to follow Christ for summer. I'm going to follow Christ for a winter. That's not the way that we go about following Christ. Because the Christian life, right, being a follower of Christ, being his disciple isn't a part-time job. It, it, this isn't s- some kind of summer internship, right? This isn't even a hobby. And for a lot of us, we think it's like a, a mask you just kind of throw on or a, a, a light that you just kind of turn on with the flip of a switch whenever it's time to be Christ-like. But when it comes to the Christian faith, when it comes to being a follower of Christ, it is a calling that is placed on our lives as people who have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, who confess Him as Lord and Savior, and believe it, and who have made the decision to respond, right? Our commitment to be a follower of Christ is a, is, is a response to the love that Jesus has displayed to us first. In other words, being a follower of Christ means that I choose God's purpose over my preference. Right? It means I choose God's purpose over my own preference. And this morning, one of the scriptures we are asked to read is Matthew chapter 4, verses 19 to 20. But what I like to do is I like to read to you guys verses 18 to 22. And here's what it says. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their uh, uh, in the in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending the nets. And he called to them, and guess what? Immediately they left the boat and they their father, and followed him. You know this this is the famous passage where Jesus begins to call the first disciples. He calls uh, he calls them. He calls out to them from where they are. And in the midst of what they're doing, it tells them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. One simple statement that is packed with power, hope, and promise. Right? This profound invitation given from Jesus unto these men saying, follow me, and your lives will change forever. And what do these fishermen do? They immediately stop what they're doing, they drop their nets, they leave their boat, and they even leave their father. Right? I think it's safe to say that they left their dad in the boat and followed Jesus. But take notice to what they don't do. You see, we don't see the disciples respond with Jesus. That's nice, right? That's a nice cause you've got going on there. I like to donate my fishing net to your cause. Right? We don't see them say, hey, Jesus, I'll follow you when this fishing season is over. We don't see them ask Jesus, hey, Mr. Jesus, by chance, can you make me a fisher of men? For the weekends because my monday to friday is pretty busy but i could also use the extra work on top of what i'm already doing i also saw this this funny little comic strip and this and it it was uh simon right he went to go make business cards and on the business card it read fishers of men and then he goes and he meets jesus and he's now known as peter I'll, i'll look for that image and i'll throw that in there for you guys to see but notice at their immediate response they didn't make excuses they didn't ask further questions they didn't ask for more 
details, scripture tells us that their immediate response was to choose God's purpose over their preference. To them, they un- the way that they understood following Jesus was to surrender what they were doing, surrender the direction that they were headed, and to take their lives, turn it around, and hand it over to the direction, to the guidance of Jesus. The decision to follow Jesus wasn't to be a part of his cause, But it was the acceptance to Jesus' invitation to follow him and I'll make you fishers of men. They were giving their lives over to Jesus. Church, this morning I want to ask you the question. When it comes to following Jesus, when it comes to your life and the decision that you've made to follow Jesus, are you just supporting his cause while ho- while still holding on to your life and living it the way that you desire? Or have you decided to follow Jesus by surrendering your preferences for his purpose? Church, understand this. If you're not following him, if you have not surrendered your life over to him, Know this today, know this fact this morning that God is calling out to you from wherever you are and He is inviting you to follow Him today. I pray that you would hear His calling, that you would accept His invitation, and that you begin to follow Him. Church, may God Bless your day as he leads you and as he guides you today. May you follow him and go in peace. Amen and amen. God bless.